work for Viewpoints is a piece called um, You See, Breathe, Feel. It's an idea that I'd sort of had for a while of using these. There's a company in India called Gravaki Labs and they've produced this ink from um, pollution. So they capture car exhaust fumes and then through like a, a process, like chemically pull it down and turn that into pigment. And I was really interested in that idea of, you know, turning a problem into a solution, you know, like making artwork out of it, but also it's a sort of form of carbon storage. Pollution's something that we're actively involved in that's having an active effect on us, and that effect isn't necessarily a positive one. People need to really wake up, myself included, to that, you know, the impact that pollutants are having on the planet and more specifically like how that affects us ourselves you know like the impact of diesel fumes on young children and growing up in cities but it's like how do you push people to start to think about that or ways in which it affects it and I guess this work and I guess my practice in general I'm interested in making works that sort of are like not just representative of that idea they're actually they actually become the idea I'm not just sort of making a drawing of of how pollution kind of affects things. It's like I'm actually using pollution to affect things. So there's this added, for me, there's like an added depth to it, hopefully that people will kind of respond to and react to in a positive way. So I've made essentially um, a lung cleaning station. It's a phytoremediation chamber. So phytoremediation is um, plants removing toxins. So all the plants that I've chosen are removing toxins from the air. So toxins that are found in a building, everything inside of our buildings give off um, toxic chemicals from formaldehydes, benzenes, things like that. And then lots of these toxins also come from cars and come from industry, factories, things like that. So all the plants I've chosen are ones that are taking the toxins out of the air in Middlesbrough, but also it would be the same in most environments. Um, and so what it is, is, is it's, it's, I've, I've made a really minimal structure out of steel. I was able to commission someone to, to make a steel structure for me. And it's just wrapped in recycled plastic. And then inside are hundreds of plants that are actively cleaning the air. And so it should, it should all be a um, glowing green cube of oxygen and light and breath. I mean, all of these plants are predominantly plants that you can buy. And, you know, I think we don't think about how um, the air inside our homes, we don't think about that very much. So, you know, there's a lot of talk and research and monitoring done about the air in the, in the outside environment. So pollution from factories, from cars, things like that. There's a lot of that dialogue. But there's not that much that people are looking at about you know how our flat pack lifestyles release loads of formaldehyde, xylenes and all of these chemicals um, in, in, the, in the nature of the flat pack, in the materials used, the binders, the glues, things like that. So our, our home environment is, is actually quite toxic and by doing simple things like putting plants in your home, you can, you can negate that, you can remediate that. You know? And then also um, I think that we really, as, as a society, need to look, about, look at how we're living and looking at how we can be taking steps to actively um, counteract some of the things that we're doing currently and that we've also done in the past. Like, we need to be greening our cities, we need to be greening our homes, we need to be you know, covering every surface we can with living things to try and negate all the pollutants we've released and are releasing. And so sit stop it consists of a series of nine small um, miniature huts that you can sit on so they work as benches and you can sit on them in different angles um, and then the roofs of the huts are at different angles to create um, the sense of it being a bird in flight um, so they're all at different degrees and um, so and they sort of undulate like that way and it's sort of almost like the people become birds on these little perches that they sit on and then also the birds around the area um, will also probably sit on it um, so it's kind of celebrating both of those things. So working with some local community groups and um, when I did the initial site visit I found that um, there was a lot of beach combing and local activity really taking care of the coastline so um, in order to tap into this I worked with local communities and plastic that they'd collected from their beach combs have actually been recycled to create the roofs so if you look into the detail of the roofs you'll see a comb you'll see straws 
you'll see bits of um, ketchup packets and these kind of things. In connection with the theme of clean air, there's a series of different um, interactions on each bench. So each bench has a different way of interacting with the space, taking in the view. And a few of those are based on meditation and the breath. So there's an exercise of counting to a certain number while you breathe in, holding the air and then breathing it out again as a way of getting connected with the moment and the space that you're in. So through that, you're breathing in the clean air and connecting with the area. I'd like audiences to take away from the work um, a deeper connection with nature and an appreciation that sometimes I think the distancing from nature can add to the, its demise in a way and I think it's really important that people take the time to meditatively sit and stop and, and connect with nature. And particularly when you're surrounded by so much beauty as you are in this area, I think it's important to actually appreciate it. So I hope people go away with a new appreciation of where they live. Greenhouse is it's, it's a collaboration between an architect and myself. I'm from a textile background, so we were wanting to make a piece of work which was, you know, highlighting sustainability. So the materials are using like sustainable wood, and picking up on this theme of clean air. So we've been looking at house plants that people can look, put inside their homes to actually cleanse the air. And the work itself, though, is um, we're, we're looking backwards to Victorian architecture and reinterpreting it using modern techniques. So we've been using laser cutting technology to make the work. We've been looking at Japanese textile patterns and actually decoratively applying these to the actual structure. We knew Darlington quite well and the market, um, which is, we see that as a sustainable business, which has been going for hundreds of years, it's going to go for hundreds of more years. We thought, well, that would be an ideal location for a greenhouse featuring our plants, in interior plants. And with the title Greenhouse, we're playing upon the idea of something that is a greenhouse where you grow plants, but it's also a greenhouse in that it's a domestic home environment that is as green as possible. We're hoping that audiences will um, be able to take away some ideas about health issues to do with like toxic fumes like clean air and demonstrating the type of, types of plants that people can use that they can put inside their homes to actually create a purer um, breathing environment. So um, I'm presenting Human Sensor, which is uh, a multi-layered artwork because it is a wearable as well as the performance, as well as the uh, real-time data visualization. Um, and basically what it is, it's a wearable which is responding to the human breath, which um, also is responding to the uh, air quality around the person who wears it and which also looks at how human breath and human body can be the sensor or biosensor of the air quality around us. Um, and basically the, the costume, it can convey uh, via changing colors of the light um, about the changes of the uh, black carbon in the air. So when the air is clear and, um, and it's okay, um, the light is white. However, more and more pollutions are there, the, the costume becomes redder and redder. And the costume as well, as I mentioned, respond in real time to the rhythm of the breath um, of the wearer. So very often when the air quality is bad, our breath is constrained and also that is reflected in the rhythm of the uh, uh, fading in and out of the light within the costume. My main focus is to look at technology which is usually very human-centered and to see how can I human uncenter it in such a way so instead of um, dividing us from environment and nature, it can bring us closer. This piece of work is Haldane. It's going to be a 31 metre wide and 10 metre high installation. It's based on the dazzle camouflage paint job of HMS Vetch, which was a ship built on the Tyne. And um, we've worked in a, uh, an, an op art pattern into the wings of the birds to create constant motion within the piece. And um, it's named after a scientist by the name of John Scott Haldane, 
who was um, his work into uh, carbon dioxide gases led him to suggest the use of canaries in a coal mine to detect the presence of poisonous gases within the mine. Um, so the canary is a sentinel species and what that means is um, it, you know, it can detect harmful gases within an environment in order to demonstrate to humans that there is, there is poison within the atmosphere. And I felt that the use of canaries, particularly whilst we're stood here and, and uh, the Amazon rainforest is burning, is, uh, is quite timely, you know, and if these birds could act as uh, a warning signal for us to be considering what we're putting into our atmosphere, I think that would, uh, I'd feel that was quite successful. I think the Tees Valley, it's, um, I think similarly to uh, the rest of the Northeast in general, I think obviously it's lost a lot of its heavy industry over the years. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to work in the public realm, doing the sort of work that I've been doing to celebrate that, that industrial past, but also draw attention to the fact that the Tees Valley in the Northeast in general is changing and changing for the better. So I think, um, you know, th that's my perception is that there's a lot of people doing a lot of work to, to make the region better. And I think that's something that's really important to celebrate.